I'm going to talk about how to view the multiverse. And when I first was asked this question, I was thinking, well, is this a question like, how do we look at the Hubble pictures? Or is this a question, you know, how do we actually look at the multiverse and see it? Or how should I think about the multiverse and how should I do it? And the multiverse is very popular these days. It's become an MCU, you know, staple that there's multiverse and it's an idea that's been around a long time and uh, gives writers a lot of freedom because they can imagine the same situation slightly different in many different cases. So you can say, what if I change this? What if I change that? It's a sort of a what if. And it's very intriguing and it gives you perspective on things and makes you try and think about how things might work out in different situations. So in that sense, I will view the universe as a useful way to have perspective. It's like you've done multiple simulations and see how it comes out differently or something. Or to think about what if, what if this was different or what if that was different and so forth. But let's get down to the, the core physics kind of issues. This idea of the multiverse and everything really stems from some work done by a graduate student, Francis Everett, when he was at Princeton working uh, with John Wheeler, when he was trying to understand how to interpret quantum mechanics, which is quantum mechanics has been formulated in such a way that we can do a lot of calculations and get the correct answers and so forth. But while the pioneers were doing it, there were lots of things they didn't understand the answers to or even were questions to ask, but they did develop a formula, a formulation of how to do things and how to make things work. It leads to, to these very situations like the cat in the box. It's both alive and dead superposition of the of waveforms and so forth. It's, it's a thing that how, how can something exist in two situations at once, which is kind of something like that. And that has to do with how you're doing the interpretations, how you're doing the various kinds of thinking about, well, how to apply the rules and how to think, work things out. Whereas nature doesn't have that problem. Nature somehow works things out. So it was a big problem for Einstein. He didn't believe in spooky action at a distance or that God played dice. But when you go down and look at the simple sort of Copenhagen interpretation, or some of the other interpretations that people did at quantum mechanics, that things existed in multiple configurations, like the live and the dead cat, until the measurement is made and then instantly the wave function collapses and you get one outcome. It's just like having a particle go off in the distance and you do the experiment, then the particle way over here automatically is gonna have the match. And so how does that happen? Does that look like action at a distance? Everett was trying to understand that and he came up with what people refer to as the many worlds interpretation although many people, I believe, misunderstood what he was saying compared to what I think he was saying, which was every time there's a quantum decision, the universe branches and it goes off on its own path. So you can imagine right now, at the time I'm talking to you, the entire universe has branched on the scale of 10 to the 22 times. Now, I don't particularly like that because I hate to think that when I'm trying to decide what to tell you that I caused 110 to the 22 new universes. It seems, even though if they might be zero energy in the universe, it's still a lot of action, a lot of stuff going on to make that many possible universes. And so I kind of look at a different version of the interpretation, which is that all those different paths were taken and what we end up finding is just like when light travels through a medium, you end up with the light concentrating in the paths that take the shortest of the most stable time so they, they can interfere together. And so in that situation, when I look at the multi-universe, I see the universe we're in as one of the most likely universes because it's one of the most traveled universe. And it's not, not a, a, a situation where universes are created in, 
and or pop out of existence. When somebody says, I'll do this measurement and look and see if the cat's alive, I don't pop a whole bunch of universes out of existence. And because uh, people in the universe might not be happy about that. But the fact is, it's just like a river or a person. You know, the river is flowing along and it's still the same river, but it's not the same river. The atoms have moved through, the current has gone up or down, the current has drifted around, but it's still the same river by description because we haven't defined it absolutely down to the last bit. And a human being like you or like me, are you the same exact thing as you were two years ago? And the answer is no, atoms have been replaced, decisions have been made, but you think there's a certain continuity to what's you. And so the question of what about the multiverse? Well, it's open to interpretation. How, what do you want to think of that? And uh, I try to take the one that requires <laughs> the least construction all the time. <laughs> However, it, uh, it doesn't mean the universe itself works that way. So the, the multiverse is a way of thinking about what's happening at a quantum mechanical level. It's also a separate one, a way of thinking about what if, what if the world was different? What if I made this decision or whatever it is? It's on many levels. It's an entertainment on a personal level but it's also down at some quantum mechanical level that we're trying to understand what the multiverse might be. But the multiverses shouldn't be able to interfere with each other. I mean, once they split off, they need to stay independent. Otherwise, you got a, a problem of clashing universes and inconsistency, unless you're holding like me, that there's this flow to more probable. So anyway, I think it's a very interesting question and I think about it moderately often, but I don't know a clear answer, but my Billy and Billy friends are free to speculate and think of what they want and see if they can come up with a really good answer. Thank you very much.